to the right that the second truck in front of me could go to, but he is determined to go left. Absolutely determined to go left. It's the longest five minutes ever. Oh. And the other driver here in front of me can't finish passing him because everybody um this week's vlog is going to be a little bit different than i've been than what i've typically been filming um simply because one i haven't gone anywhere interesting <laughs> i'm local so um two i've been kind of doing the same thing over and over and over you pick up here you drop there you pick up here you drop there. it's the same thing but anyways uh, this week though well actually kind of to piggyback off of my last vlog that you guys saw um my my other goal for 2023 is to change the way change my diet in, in a nutshell um and the reason for, for doing that is because i have some cavities in my mouth that i want to heal naturally and the way to do that is basically in a nutshell is to change what i'm eating um so i'm gonna show you guys give you a breakdown of what kind of food i'm buying and um, stuff from anywhere like you know how I make my toothpaste because I make my own toothpaste even here in the truck um, I've been eating some um, high fats high quality fats and just so anyway I'm gonna give you guys a breakdown of that here in just a minute it's absolutely the best thing I've bought yet for the truck that's this silly little clipboard it's got storage you know on the side it's got little pockets you can put like paper clips um, and you know very end here you got you, know, you add your pens pencils whatever you write with and, and then it's got a little calculator on the top which I don't use because I pretty much don't have to figure too much stuff um, for payroll they just you scan the paperwork and then all the bang all the bang so yeah I don't know if I showed you guys that or not <laughs> but I got that in the mail <laughs> I was like yes this clipboard has made scanning my paperwork so much easier because the software that my company uses um it does much better when you have well it, I, it, I shouldn't say just my company's software I, any any pro, pro, probably any company that uses software you can scan mobily instead of going inside the truck stop to use transflow which honestly um I haven't even seen the machines that you use to scan your paperwork now in quite a while. Of course, I haven't really slowed down to look for them either because I'm usually scanning everything um, paperwork-wise via the company's tablet or my cell phone via their app. But, um, but yeah, that's the one thing I really like because I've, I've heard stories of people taking their paperwork inside to the machine, the fax machine or whatever. Or not the fax machine sorry the scanner and it's shredding their paperwork <laughs> and uh probably had a hard time getting paid for those loads because paperwork's so matted up um i had one one time before my before uh swift i don't know if swift had the app already when they hired me or i hadn't downloaded it yet because i didn't have enough room on my phone at the time or some crap like that and it was trying to eat my paperwork and i was like no 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 <laughs> don't don't do that <laughs> and uh, it was one of those um papers like the carbon papers the the the, the really the ultra thin ones that really are so easy to tear you could probably tear with just blinking at it it's one of those um and i was just like no and then like i said once i found out that my company had an app i could scan it that way and there was no more shredding my paperwork i was like yeah let's do it that way <laughs> that makes more sense so yeah that's what i'm doing here this morning i'm just finishing up my paperwork before these people open up and then uh we'll go and get a chassis and then we will be on our merry way um since i've been doing this diet um that was kind of basically uh invented by i believe he was a jewish doctor his name was weston a price um i think his middle initial is a anyways 
he figured out how to heal cavities and then how to do it naturally and basically it was just the he changed the people's diets um, and one of the things that he implemented was grass-fed milk um, preferably organic grass-fed milk and I forget which um, country he got he got all the the milk and stuff and and he also fed them um ghee I... so this week um well actually i shouldn't say this week but today uh <laughs> there's like nobody hardly no trucks uh actually no there's no trucks behind me uh, as you can see there and in my other mirror there's no there's no trucks um, and that's because there is a shortage of chassis at the port that is, you know, designated for my company to pick up. And, um, yesterday afternoon, they, the yard guys were starting to take some of the containers that we brought in that were loaded and move them to the dock to be unloaded. So hopefully, I'm hoping that once I get this first chassis, um, that when I get back to the port, they're gonna have uh, some chassis with boxes, some empty boxes on, so that I can just like grab and go. Um, but if not, <laughs> today might be a little slow. <laughs> so um, I don't know. We'll we'll see. I'm trying to I'm trying to stay positive here. <laughs> oh, and I got myself a glass, a glass uh, cutting board. Super handy. Crap, I forgot what I was gonna tell you. <laughs> anyway, okay, so going so here's my crock pot um, i've already got my water set in here i hope you guys can see this and basically in the morning i'll come through and i'll get my lunch set up because this is what this is going to be this is going to be lunch organic baby carrots um i got myself some organic zucchini here comes you know it's uh it's hard to buy like organic grass-fed anything on the go but it is possible you can do it um and so anyways i'm just gonna cut the ends off of this and then i don't know what that was and i'll just cut it up put that in here And this will simmer for, I don't know, four or five hours, give or take, uh, sometimes longer. And then for breakfast, I'll either whip out, uh, I'll make a, a thing of tuna salad the night before. No pasta, no rice, no flour products. Um, let's see, that looks, that looks pretty good. I'll save the second one here for tomorrow. That's that. Um, kale is another one that I really like. So I'll just pinch off. Whoops. I'll just pinch off a handful of kale. This stuff tastes absolutely like crap when you eat it raw, but if you cook it, um, it's best, in my opinion, to fry it. You know, put a little bit of, um, some of that Kelly's uh, Kelly's butter, Kelly's farm, carry carry gold, carry gold, and uh, do this a little better so you guys can see me. Um, but yeah, and I I never was big into um, eating kale. I'm sorry, I keep looking at the time, making sure I, I don't get distracted here because these people open up at eight o'clock so i'm trying to trying to keep an eye on traffic and, and do this cooking video <laughs> um but anyways uh yeah pretty much anything vegetables is good to eat preferably vegetables that you know, like you know when you go to the grocery store you get some that have the waxy look to them on the outside try to avoid those because apparently that's really bad for this diet this weston price diet um anything organic though and uh, anything that's been grass fed, you're pretty much, you're pretty much golden. Um, so no, absolutely no processed foods of any kind, no crackers, no cookies, no cakes, no, no, sh uh, grain, no sugar, 
no processed sugar of any kind. You can have honey, which is natural, um, either the Manuka honey or the honey that you get from your um, bee farmer or honey farmer, local farmer. <laughs> Gosh, why can't I talk? Local farmer that harvests honey, okay? <laughs> um, the darker the honey, the better, like, quality it is. If you get honey that's, like, really light looking and clear, um, kind of looks more of, like, light colored syrup, that's probably fake honey. Um, or honey that's been mixed, real honey that's been mixed with um, uh, syrup. And it's just, it's not, because a lot of the stores, they don't, the big, the big chain, big box stores, they don't buy from local farmers. Why, I don't know. But anyways, um, a lot of our food gets imported from other countries. And I found a video, this has been several years ago, but they were showing that they mix honey from various countries. Just it's kind to me. I, I took it. It was kind of more of a random thing. It wasn't like, oh, we're gonna mix honey from Asia. And, oh, we're gonna mix honey from Africa. And oh, we're <laughs> and this is gonna make this kind of combination. <laughs> yeah. um, it's just kind of kind of random in my opinion. And so when the end result comes out, it's it, it, and and to make the product cheap, they add in a little bit of syrup to make it a little bit thicker or a little bit thinner, and then they can make more of the stuff and and it's just it's it's a little bit nasty in my opinion <laughs> um but anyway so yeah so kale zucchini carrots this is just one thing i cook in this crock pot um you can put um the beef i've got beef stew meat now the beef stew meat that i'm ordering um currently for this week is not grass-fed but i said something's better than nothing um i've got a farm that's not far from where i live that I've put in the order online so far and I haven't heard back from them. I'm hoping that they're going to get back with me before this weekend so I can go pick it up and have my grass fed meat for all of next week. Um, but for right now I can buy some grass fed stuff, some or some grass fed meat at the local Walmart basically um, and sometimes other food chains, grocery stores sometimes other grocery stores um and i'm just i i would much rather support my local farmer than the big box chains because the big box chains have already got i mean they've they've already made it you know um and the local the local farmer um he's just i mean he's selling he's selling local so or she's selling local you know and so anyways but this is uh when i say i'm buying grass-fed meat at grocery store this is the stuff I'm talking about um, it's not there's not a lot of not a lot here um, but it's it's enough for me and this crock pot so you know that's that's all I'm worried about <laughs> um, but you want to also too when you're doing this diet you want to kind of cut back on the sugars you want to cut back on the carbohydrates um, and the salt there's a there's a lot of salt in food already and it's it's mind blowing for me to think that I used to add salt to my food, and you know, there was like several several grams of salt already in the food. So uh, I wasn't smart, and I didn't uh, I didn't thaw this out before I started this video. So this is gonna take me a minute to get it to open, and it's gonna be Whew, okay. Um, and ideally you would put the meat in first because it'll be on the bottom of your crock pot so it'll cook faster and better and all the way through but again I didn't I didn't think this out <laughs> so we're not going we're not gonna talk about it anymore um, I'm gonna make this work <laughs> yeah. and too if it was thawed out a little bit better I would probably separate it into smaller little pieces and uh that way it doesn't kind of it's just one big glob on the top that's it, it cooks better when it's broken up into smaller pieces so yeah and the other thing too um another thing too is i'm gonna i've got a water bottle coming it's the most expensive water bottle i've ever bought in my entire life and quite frankly i i'm i'm questioning my sanity but uh <laughs> 
<laughs> Anyways, let me grab a paper towel here. Um, basically, it filters a whole bunch of crap. I think it's like a total of 360 something contaminants or something. Um, and, but the main thing I was after was filtering the fluoride. And I know I look like a hypocrite right this second, but I've got bottled water and it's already been filtered. Um, but it's got, uh, duh, 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 what do you call it? Sodium bicarbonate and then calcium chloride. I believe I'll have to go back and look. Anyways, a lot of the bottled waters have fluoride in them. And that's the, that's one of the things about this diet. I don't know if this is going to sit down here now that I've started this. Maybe when it cooks and kind of simmers down. Yeah, if I, if that had thawed out, I could have broke that broke that in half, and then it would have sat in there better. But anyway, fluoride. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to watch that crap. Crap. Um, when the vegetables get get start getting you know they start cooking down this will this will shrink down but i don't like this it doesn't sit right anyways um but the fluoride it messes with your uh your thyroid it messes with your parathyroid which is another little it's like four little small glands on your thyroid um and all of you know your thyroid is kind of in charge of um a whole bunch of stuff but like a lot of your hormones and stuff and telling your body other stuff when it should do stuff and when it shouldn't do stuff and anyways um let me make sure i got this plugged in i do have this plugged in i'm actually debating on having some coffee but apparently coffee is not something i can have on this diet or if i do have it have it in moderation and when i have coffee i don't i i love coffee it just it, the smell of it tastes so freaking good but um anyway this diet you know you it's easier for me to just cut out beans completely cut out grains all grains of any kind and to cut out um obviously soda soda pops you know you can't have any of that and i'm doing all this uh is is i'm doing all of this to try have an honest attempt to heal into cavities so basically i don't know why my camera cut off just now <laughs> anyway um we have bought a share at a csa farm and they bring us a bunch of vegetables um and it's you know it, it varies from season to season so we're fixing to start up again here in the spring and they're going to have stuff that grows best obviously in the spring and then when fall gets here they'll have stuff that grows best in the fall and so it's not the same stuff all year long and then there's no vegetables in the winter time um so that's yeah so i think i think they if i remember right they do spring summer and fall i think we get three seasons three um three different cycles of stuff that grows or something something like that I'm new to it. Mom's been doing it now for a few months, and I'm just like, hey, I want, I want to, I want to jump on that too, because that's supporting a local farmer, and I'm all about supporting local people. So, anyways, <laughs> but I know, I know in this crock pot, this, uh, um, none of this came from local, <laughs> none of this, um, and I hate that, but whatever, it's, it's all good, one thing at a time. So, but back to the fluoride, uh, I've got a water bottle that uh, it's glass, it's got a fancy little straw in it with a filter. And it's supposed to filter out a whole bunch of crap. And the one specific thing I'm trying to filter out is the fluoride. Um, I also have a water pitcher. And it's put out by a company called Clearly Filtered. If you guys are interested, I'll be sure to leave a link down below. It takes you right to their website. Um, unfortunately, at this time, I don't have a discount code for you guys. Um, if I ever get one, I'll be sure to share that with y'all. But anyway, the company's called Clearly Filtered. And I have, like I said, I have a water pitcher. It's about, you know, yay big. Um, I got to start, I got to go buy a new filter for it. Because the one I have is completely nasty. <laughs> it's, it's just gross. But, um, but anyways, uh, when I get that, I'm going to take these water bottles, put it in the, um, 
run it through the water pitcher and then take that water that's filtered and then put it in the crock pot because I don't want to be cooking with the fluoridated or possibly fluoridated water. You can't tell by looking at the water if it's got fluoride in it or not. But anyways, um, and just kind of see, I, I don't know. I mean, a lot of people believe that fluoride is good, for, you know, to prevent tooth decay. And some people are like, no, 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 no. It, it causes, it causes tooth decay. So I'm not a scientist. I'm just telling you what I found on the internet. And I'm hoping that, um, I, I'm just going to try it, you know. Uh, I do find it interesting that uh, in Europe, um, they don't fluoridate their water over there and they eat a lot better and they have, there's one article that was saying they, they basically don't have any more um, tooth decay than, you know, people here in the U.S. Uh, and then some say that, no, they have less tooth decay over there because they don't fluoridate their water than the U.S. because the U.S. has like bucoodles of, of tooth decay but we also eat really sugary stuff we eat a lot of processed foods um, there's not a lot of you know affordability I guess you could say for real nutritious healthy food and if you do find the real nutritious healthy food that's grass-fed and organic and all that jazz it's so expensive um, I know for my family and I, I started buying the grass-fed milk. Um, I, well, actually, I take it back. I started out buying raw cow's milk, which, by the way, tasted really good. Uh, I know a lot of people get freaked out about, like, oh my gosh, you can't eat raw, cow you, you can't consume raw cow's milk. It's gonna, it's gonna kill you. You're gonna get bad cow's disease. You know, uh, that did not happen. Uh, <laughs> it's all about, you know, you gotta test your cows. You got to find out what kind of proteins they've got and I don't understand all that process but they, they test them and then I guess um, basically there's more emphasis on clean handling of the milk when you harvest it um, yeah but anyways I didn't get sick I didn't die it's all good so um, but unfortunately that particular supplier was like almost two hours away and I was like, I can't do that every week. <laughs> it's just it's too much. And I think it was like something crazy, like 13 bucks a gallon or something. Like it was crazy. So anyways, um, sorry about that. I had to, I had to move up. Traffic was moving out, so I had to move up. Um, I say traffic, I'm talking about the shipper here. <laughs> um, anyways, so I, I quit going and driving like the two hours to go get this, you know, really expensive, but great tasting raw cow's milk. And I found this this farm that's not far from me where I'm going to get my grass-fed meat and all this kind of stuff for the week. Um, they also have a milk supplier who, that's all they do is, is they feed their cows grass. And um, anyways, they they don't they don't sell it as raw cow's milk, but it's like cooked at such a low temperature that it doesn't kill like all the enzymes and you know other good stuff in the milk. And um, so anyway, I've been drinking that, and it costs the same amount of money that Walmart sells organic milk that's not grass-fed. It's fed all kinds of who knows what. Probably got a bunch of antibiotics. I don't know. It just you know, or well, maybe not the organic milk. But anyways, we've tasted the organic milk that we get at the, the grocery store, and it's the same price as the, that this farmer selling it. And it's it the, the taste difference is way, way, way different. Um, so anyways, we trust our local farmers. Uh, those, those folks, they work really, really hard. And if you have the, you know, option to go out and stop and support your local farmer, I absolutely am. I'm all for that because, um, at the end of the day, you know, when they're talking about food shortages and, you know, the food trucks just can't get the stuff to the, to the grocery stores because of X, Y, and Z, um, or the supplier is, you know, they, they, their plant caught on fire, whatever, you know, the situation is, um, those local farmers, it's local. It, everything they get is local and they, they, they're fantastic problem solvers. They have, you know, really good customer service and you're supporting the most important thing is you're supporting an American, you know, here in the U S anyways. <laughs> um, those who are watching it in other countries um, you know when you go to support your local farmer in your area you're supporting you know your 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 uh, your country you know 
<laughs> uh, but anyways, I, I love the idea though of supporting an American farmer because this country, if and I don't know how much of this guys you, you you guys already know this or not, but um, there's there's a really bad shortage of farmers in the U.S. alone, and um, I know for me personally, I've I've tried farming. Um, I don't come from a farming family, so anytime I've tried to dive into farming stuff, I am a newbie. <laughs> I don't know anything. Um, enough, I, well, I don't know enough to be like called an expert, if you will. <laughs> um, I mean, nobody knows everything, and I, I certainly don't, and I'm constantly learning stuff. And uh, I, have, I have realized a long time ago that... Um, you it's important to buy the equipment to run a farm especially if you don't have enough manpower and right now you know mom and I we don't we don't have enough manpower to keep up with the farm you know the property that we have now um, and it drives me nuts because I really want <sighs> freaking truck um, it drives me nuts because uh, I have all these ideas and, and things that I want to do with the property and it's it's kind of a it's a challenge to go to a regular job and then to come home and try to you know manage the manage the farm um, and it's I'm hoping that in 23 later in 23 anyways uh, that that <coughs> challenge will get a lot easier um, because the thing the, the business that mom and I are, are wanting to start is if it works out <laughs> um, the the property is going to be the property is going to be making some money so I'm, I'm hoping that's going to be very successful because then I can leave trucking and go you know work here on the farm and still do the the rodeo stuff and still you know have a really good just work-life balance I guess you can say so anyways but yeah I I've got uh, I've got to go later this week and pick up the uh, meat from the farm and um, pick up the milk from this farm that I'm going to later this week. And I just realized I have left my light on. Oh, and I got a brag. I got a, I got some rugs for the truck. This one says, this is your happy place. It's, uh, can you believe America is selling, uh, little floor mats now, like half the size they used to be. That's crazy to me. That was a dollar and 25 cents. Uh, I got it at the dollar store. This one says, wipe your paws. It's another half a mat dollar 25 and then I got the one back there it says bless so but the really cool thing let's see if I can grab it here is this vacuum cleaner I got this vacuum cleaner because I'm sick and tired of sweeping and uh, I've got to I gotta finish vacuuming and then I gotta mop my floors again because they are just absolutely trash um, but anyways I started vacuuming last night and it's not it's not good enough <laughs> so um, when I get home, I'm going to vacuum, take out all these rugs, and get my, I'm trying, I need to go find my Swiffer mop and get in here and really get down and clean this floor again, because I don't, uh, I don't want to use the steam cleaner again, because I'm not trying to ruin the floors, I'm just trying to, you know, I did that to sanitize the floors, because it was, it was really gross, but, um, but yeah, so, anyways, that's, uh, that was, that's what was new this week for the truck, got myself a little rechargeable vacuum and apparently that filter that's inside you can take that off and wash it um they sent a little brush and i don't know where i got that brush right the second but anyway they can send a little brush to kind of clean it off and then you can take it out and wash it in warm water and put it back in and blah 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 um and it comes with the it has a little light on the front of it so that's kind of cool anyways yeah that's what's new in the truck so, just, just gonna stop on the other side of the bridge all right that's um that's not cool you know but uh okay okay goodness gracious so on a side note um i'm not sure which week it's gonna be but probably after the 
first hopefully at least by my birthday in February um, we'll be turning 32 um, my 30s is going by quick it feels like I don't know my 20s I felt like they dragged on and then then when I got to my 30s it was like oh well, yeah no my 20s went by really quick but anyways um, I'm hoping to be getting a haircut. I'm thinking about getting some bangs again, maybe flare them off to the side, shorten my my uh, my braid here, um, get some layers, and you know, go back to curling my hair. Um, I've got some curl formers that I can put in my hair and like sleep on them overnight, and then get up the next morning and just wake up beautiful. Uh, <laughs> anyways, I gotta get some hair hairspray. I just I miss being able to. I need a new new hairstyle because the braid is just kind of I don't know kind of kind of tired. I've been wearing long hair with like almost no layers now for like I don't know three four years. It's 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 time for a new hairstyle. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'll be uh, I'll be sure to show you guys the before and after. I don't I don't really like going and getting my hair cut because at first it's nice it's like whoa i love it and then it's like and then the next moment i'm like oh i miss my long hair you know so but my hair is like down a little bit past my waist when i take it out the braid so i think i'm gonna bring up bring it back up to like maybe my elbows or something um so it's still be pretty long but not you know like it used to be so yeah kind of excited and if the hairdresser cuts it too short, then, you know, it'll, it'll grow back. It'll grow back. It'll be all right. I'll be sad about it, but it'll be all right. So, yeah. I don't know where I'm going to find the time to go and do that because it seems like every weekend there's so much to do. And I'm like, I told mom and my sister the other day, I was like, we really need to stop being workaholics. Like, I mean, I know the work needs to be done. But like, we literally work all the time. And like, I don't even film all of it because like this past weekend, um, mom and I and you know, we, we were doing home improvement projects. Um, and you know, there was one, one time where I had to you know, stick my head underneath mom's house to help run some electrical and um, we had our handyman there and uh i mean he he did most of the work but i mean i was just like mom <laughs> we gotta do better <laughs> we've been doing this my entire life i mean we we really need to 2023 we really need to like take pause and and go do something fun and so anyways my sister's birthday's coming up here the next week or so and we've got things planned um, mom and I, we've, we've, we've told Rachel, we're not, we're not, we're not telling you where we're going. <laughs> and she's kind of like onto the fact that there's something up, but she hasn't quite figured out what it is. So anyways, but yeah, somewhere in there, uh, we're going to have fun time. I'm going to get a haircut and I'm going to finish editing this vlog. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> a lot more 
process stuff that humans have manipulated, um, processed, and, and changed the, the compounds, the molecular compounds of food. Um, we don't have near the health problems. And you can go to, you know, you can look back on several different, I'm sorry, there was something in the sky. You can look back on several several cultures. Um, I like to think about the Native Americans. You know, overall, those folks, they didn't have a lot of health problems. And a lot of that was because they, they ate the food that God provided them. Now, yes, they worshiped different gods and stuff and, and you know, false gods and, and prophets and all that good jazz and nature. Um, but that's, you know, that's, that's, that's a whole nother, whole nother conversation. Um, I was reading up again this morning, because I, I don't know, I, I get that way. Sometimes I'll get hung up on, like, reading health articles and blogs and, um, sometimes books. There's a book I actually bought here a few years ago. It's called Cure Tooth Decay. And all this information, too, that I'm providing you guys, I'm going to try to find links to either articles, books, supplements, all that good jazz in the video description below. So just you know, when you get done watching this video, be sure to go check that out. Uh, I don't get anything out of, you know, those links. So if you guys click them, I mean, it's just more power to you. I, I, don't, I don't get any sort of um, commission for it. But anyways, I was reading that there's, for a long time, there was a, a misunderstanding K vitamins, specifically K1 and K2. K2 deals more with basically managing your calcium deposits and like where your body is storing the calcium or where your body assigns that the calcium is going to and make sure that the calcium that it does have in your body is in the, um, is in the proper place already. So in other words, for some reason, um, body is stored calcium and I don't know your your uh, I don't know somewhere else in your body that it shouldn't be it goes in and corrects that um, whereas K1 vitamin that's responsible that helps your liver actually go in and um, regulates the blood clotting proteins you know that basically when you get a cut if you've got enough K1 in your body, it'll help your body, you know, send out a message. Hey, so-and-so's got a cut here in this area of their body. We need to send some, some blood clotting proteins down there to, to make that, you know, start forming a scab and, you know, all that good jazz. And, uh, anyways, but back to my teeth. Uh, I remember walking through Yellowstone National Park. Absolutely gorgeous place. And um, they were talking about the buffalo out there and the fact that they lose their teeth. And of course, you know, with any wild animal, they start losing their teeth and they basically start going downhill health-wise. And then, you know, they get picked off by their natural predators because, well, they're weak or skinny, probably got a disease, you know, the whole life cycle situation takes place. And uh, anyways, they were saying that the buffalo like to go sit in the um, hot springs, which has a bunch of um, sulfur. I think it's called hot springs. It's been a few years. Y'all correct me if I'm wrong. It's either called the sulfur springs or hot springs or something. Anyway, it's inside National, inside Yellowstone National Park. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. I love it when people let me merge. But, uh, but anyway, they were saying that what happens is the buffalo enjoyed, uh, you know, Earth's hot, natural hot tub a little too much. And so the sulfur in the water, get, you know, it gets in their system and starts decaying their teeth. And so they start losing their teeth. And then, like I was saying a minute ago, you know, once they start losing their teeth, then they start losing weight and get sick. And then they get picked off by the wolves, bears, coyotes, whatever else is out there, you know. And, uh... Anyways, so that is, you know, it, it, some, it's 
some people are like, oh, you know, if I eat natural stuff, um, you know, I'll be good to go. And, you know, I'll take these vitamins I got at the store and I'll be good to go. You know, and that it's not just that. When you're dealing with your teeth, specifically the way Weston Price um, prescribed people to do
few weeks. Um, I've taken the cod liver oil and the butter oil supplement now for the past few years. I feel like that slowed the decay down, but it, again, I wasn't eating the diet that Weston Price was prescribing his patients. So I still got some stuff that I've ordered that um, is, I'm waiting on it to come be delivered and so I can put that here in the truck. Um, the other thing that I have ordered that I've gotten the notification that it's been delivered is my grass-fed bone broth. I am excited. It's put out by a company called Kettle and Fire. And again, I'll leave a link down below to let you guys, you know, find that stuff.
organs, you know, just little little things here and there all over. I mean, the body, the whole body is kind of the way God designed our bodies. I mean, it's really smart and complicated and simple all at the same time. But like I said, when you add those chemicals in there over time, they um, they start depleting your body of the vitamins and mineral you know, stores that they had and trying to compensate for this for these chemicals that you're eating in your food so um i you know i i know this is a little bit of a rant but i'm like i said i'm just right now i'm focused on my health and i'm just i'm honestly and this is a side note i'm curious too when i go to get my hair cut and i get everything that i need for this diet um I'm curious over time if my hair is going to get like a little bit thicker or is it, is it going to grow faster, is it going to be healthier, like you know all those things that women are always like, oh my hair, this does this and, and this shampoo does that, which you know, <laughs> another side note, um, I've, I've been making my own shampoo as well, so it's like a shampoo and conditioner combo together, you know. And um, I, it's basically just apple cider vinegar and what um, right now I'm using Neroli essential oil and um, <laughs> uh, I've only used it a couple of times and I mean to me it's like a, a second to maybe like a bottle of Pantene you know it's I mean it's not Pantene but it, I mean, again, it's on my hair, so I, I'm not going to sit here and say that, you know, every woman in the world should use my recipe and da 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 da, -da. I'm, just, I'm just telling you what works for me because, you know, I mean, my body is obviously not like everybody else's body. So, you know, I'm just, I'm listening to my body and my body is telling me things and I'm trying to understand, you know, what it's telling me. <laughs> and right now... The main focus is my teeth, and my teeth are telling me, say, hey girl, <laughs> you need some more calcium, and we're just going, we're going to have to take it from your teeth. And, you know, with doing all of this stuff for my teeth, if I can't get my cavities to heal, then I'll just go to the dentist like, you know, normal people, and just go and get my, my cavities filled. But, you know, at least at that point, I'll be able to say, you know, I tried. I really did try. Um, I've kind of semi sorta tried it a year you know a year or two ago but I wasn't really following the diet so but now I'm putting in an actual honest to goodness effort to do everything that you know the price diet calls to do. Um so I'm just you know we'll give it give it some time and and hope hope it works. I really I'd much rather uh, have my teeth fix themselves you know than to have get uh, actual fillings. And I don't know if I said this already or not, but in that book called Cure Tooth Decay, um, the guy in there who is also another doctor gives you references as to how to go about finding doctors who understand the price diet and understand that, you know, some of the fillings that people get on their teeth can be toxic um have you know they'll have like toxic metals and stuff and so anyways um they they are all about you know taking those toxic fillings out because some of some of those fillings at least back in the day had a little bit of mercury mixed in it so that's like apparently not good <laughs> um but anyway they'll take those those toxic fillings out for you and put a temporary cap on there as long as you're doing the price diet, give yourself time, give give your teeth time to, you know, grow back and fix themselves. Fix themselves. Um, I'm not doing this this video to like give you expert medical advice. It's just to share with you what I'm what I'm doing. And in addition to that, if I'm successful at you know getting my teeth to heal, uh, I may go find doctor um, that the book prescribes to go take my other fillings out and see if I can try to get those those teeth to grow back and, and fix fix themselves but I'm a long ways from that so I don't know um, we'll, we'll see we'll see a little 
baby steps. I will say this, that there's so much information out there about, you know, health. If you dig far enough, I mean, it, it kind of, it, it overwhelms me a little bit. <laughs> so that's why, you know, sometimes if I, if I have time, I'll slow down and I'll, I'll take notes. And um, when I get my new laptop, I know this is completely not related to what we're talking about, but when I get my new laptop, which is going to be after I become debt free, please, Jesus, Lord, please, please, please let that day come sooner rather than later. But anyways, <laughs> um, when I get my laptop, I'm planning on getting a printer. I might do a printer or a scanner combo thing because there's, I mean, I can't tell you guys how many times I find really good information online that somebody else went to school and
it's important to take a minute and stop and, and ask the Lord for some help and to thank him when he does help you because uh, I, I greatly greatly appreciate it because when I don't have a trailer I don't make any money <laughs> so yeah that, that's what uh, that's what happened this week in the midst of all of this uh, telling you what I'm doing with to, to help my health out God is God is so good I you can't say that enough <laughs> any soap. Um, this is the bowl that I use to make my toothpaste for the week. And as soon as I get it clean here, I'm going to show you guys how I measure out uh, or how much I measure to put in this canister, this little bowl here and make my toothpaste. So let me just finish cleaning up this nasty gunk. That water's really hot. Let me uh, finish cleaning this up here. I forgot to buy some Saran Wrap um, to put on the top of this, but I think what I'm going to do, this is this was the smallest bowl I had on hand. I think what I'm going to do is take one of the uh, jars, glass jars that my uh, my ghee comes in, because it's got a lid on it, and that will be small enough to stay in my fridge in the truck so that I don't have to worry about this staying clean. I think that's pretty much good enough for it. I'm going to clean this spoon a little bit better. Warm water, a good scrubber, and you're good to go. On that. I'm showing these people how I'm going to make my toothpaste. Well, hi! So, I just got a, a little small um, tablespoon, or I'm sorry, teaspoon, and get yourself a bag of activated charcoal. This is uh, 16 ounces here. Uh, I think I got this off of eBay for like, I don't know, 10, 12 dollars, something like that. I don't remember exactly. Uh, and then I got myself a bag of bentonite clay. I don't know if you guys can see that pretty good. Um, this is food grade make sure you get the food grade kind because apparently there's there's two you know there's the non-food and food grade make sure you get the food grade kind um that way if you accidentally swallow this um you're not you know hurting yourself anyway but this is a two pound bag and inside of it is kind of a greenish greenish color i don't know if you guys can see that real good um whitish a very pale i'd say a pale green maybe a hint of brown it's not it's not much in there. But anyway, I take a good teaspoon of that and put that in there. Sometimes I'll put two. And this time I think I'm gonna do two. It tastes so so good. Alright, and I seal that bag up. I have a Ziploc bag that I've been keeping this in because I'm trying to make sure no moisture or anything, you know, gets in there because I don't want it to get, you know, clumpy or anything like that. And then I take a little bit, take a little bit of baking soda. I can get it to come out. Da -da 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 -da. Come on. Da -da -da. Okay, well, you don't need much of that. The, the clay is the is the main ingredient you want to get a good chunk of. Now the um, charcoal here it is super duper very very black you can't even see in there because it's so it's i mean it's black but um me personally i like to clean the spoon off before i put this in there so i'll make sure it's all clean get the rest of that little gunk off And then you just take a little bit. This is so dark. Is that okay? Hold on. That's way too much. Way too much charcoal. It's gonna be very, very black. You need only. Well, you guys probably can't see that, but there's. Ah! There's only like a, a good maybe pinch or so 
think you can see that. It's very, very little on the spoon. Put that in there. It's about that much. You don't need a lot. Let me see if I can shake the rest of this back into the bag. Cause I, I made the mistake one time. I put like a full teaspoon of the charcoal and in this and it just, it was, <laughs> it was black. Oh, I had some black toothpaste. But anyways, let's reseal this back up. Get down, sit that there. Try to get this to seal back up a little bit better. Um, and then I have filtered water. That's what this here is. And then just turn that on. Get a little bit of water. And then mix it in. Whoops. Mix it. And you kind of want it to be more of a paste. See, right now it's clumping up. I'm going to have to add some more water. One on there. You can't add too much water. Um, and when that happens, you just, you know, you go back. Same thing like you would if you were cooking. You just go back and you add a little bit more flour or whatever you know you're making. I like mine to be a nice soft little paste. And you just, you know, you work the edges here. You go all the way around because, you know, in this, I've done this a few times and it looks like I need to add more water, but you just keep working it and it will, it'll all mix. And you won't have to, you won't have to add as much water as you think. And mine, there's really no wrong way of doing this. Um, some of y'all might, you know, like, you know, can I, can I make a different, different color? You can, it's, it's basically the clay is the more important piece. But anyway, you come out and it's all nice. Oops, get in front of the camera. It's a nice little paste like that. So you don't want it too dry and you don't want it too wet. And it's, you know, good to go but yeah I'll make um I'll make more of this I'll fill up the bowl probably I don't know halfway ish maybe well maybe not even that far it, it this goes really far um this cleans my teeth really really good I don't my the enamel on my teeth I mean it's it feels much shinier and it feels cleaner I've had people tell me my teeth look really really white um, I'm not, this is, this is my natural whitener, if you will. I don't use any other chemicals. Um, this, this is it. So anyways, that's it. Just three ingredients, baking soda, bentonite clay, and activated charcoal. And you're good to go. Get yourself a bowl or something to keep it in. Put this in the refrigerator so it doesn't spoil. And, um, yeah, that's it. So if you guys find that this video has helped you out, be sure to let me know in the comments down below and uh yeah so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next vlog Mwah! love y'all bye